is Elias Loben. I'm a dealer in authentic ancient Greek, Roman, Biblical, Byzantine coins and artifacts. Through my website, trustedcoins.com. Every item I sell comes complete with a certificate of authenticity. A lifetime guarantee of authenticity, my signature, I've identified over 28,000 authentic items. The coin in a professional uh, plastic display flip that you could take off from here and put it on your wallet or into your coin collecting box with a brief description that you get with the bigger of the bigger description. The, big, the bigger description over here is professionally done, many times citing a major numismatic reference or collection. By the way, this is a coin, authentic ancient silver Roman coin of Augustus, so pretty neat. And in the back, is, you have the historical context of the item you purchased. So this way, even if you're giving this as a gift, which would make a really nice gift, um, to yourself or others, you know exactly what, that person knows exactly what they're getting and you know exactly what you're getting because I have a selection of over 6,000 items with the most professional descriptions. Today, I'm going to be talking about coins of the ancient Roman Republic period and what the Roman Republic was. First, I'm going to show you a silver coin of the Roman Republic. This is a silver Roman coin of the Roman Republic featuring the ancient Roman god Janus, which is, was the god of the beginnings and ends, and he had a temple in Rome which had its doors closed whenever there was a, a ceasing of war. And on the other side you would have Jupiter, you see he's carrying a thunderbolt, driving what's called the quadriga. Quadriga means it's a chariot drawn by quad rigas, which is four horses. And on the bottom it says Roma, for Rome. And on the back he has a little victory coming. So this is a picture of a silver coin. I'm going to read you a little bit of the history behind that coin, and then read you about the Roman Republic. This was a, this was a quadrigatus. was a medium-sized silver coin produced by the Roman Republic during the 3rd century BC. So it's, the obverse features a young Janiform bust and the reverse features a victory driving a Viga, a force horse chariot. Giving the coin its name, the inscription, Roma below. Michael Crawford, however, suggested that the Janiform head represents the Dioscori. So that's interesting. Uh, one person that's a numismatic reference writer, he said that on the front of the coin it could be the Dioscori, which means the Gemini twins. The Gemini twins, uh, you know, come out very often on coins of the Roman Republic. Modern numismatic references consider these coins as anonymous Roman silver. Notice that a uh, coin did not have any names other than Roma. Other coins, they featured the family names under which the coin was issued. So, th there was uh, some uh, coins under the family name of, uh, let's say, Brutus, you know, the assassin of Julius Caesar. Uh, it was a coin of the Roman Republic, but patrician families sometimes had the honor of putting their name on the coin and sometimes made the imagery which is a pun of the name that they had. One of them would be uh, Hesidius Geta. Uh, Hesidius said it would feature a Caledonian boar. So Hesidius and, uh, you know, and the boar had something similar to it. On the front would be Artemis because Artemis got the Caledonian boar to, you know, in the mythology to uh, do the stuff. So the, the, the Quadrigatus was the prototype of the more common design, designs of the silver co Roman Republic coins for the next 150 years. Now the history of the Roman Republic, this is rather interesting. The Roman Republic was a period of ancient Roman civilization where the government operated as a republic. It began with the overthrow of the Roman monarchy, traditionally dated to 509 BC, and its replacement by a government headed by two consuls, elected annually by citizens and advised by a senate. A complex constitution gradually developed, centered on the principles of separation of powers and checks and balances. Except in times of dire national emergency, public offices were limited to one year, so in theory at least, no single individual could dominate his fellow citizens. In practice, Roman society was hierarchical. The evolution of the constitution of the Roman Republic was heavily influenced 
by the struggle between Rome's landholding aristocracy, the patricians, who traced their ancestry back to the early history of the Roman kingdom, and far more numerous citizen commoners, the plebeians. Over time, the laws that gave patricians exclusive rights to Rome's highest officers were repealed or weakened, and a new aristocracy emerged from among the plebeian class. The leaders of the uh, Republic developed a strong tradition and morality, requ morality requiring public service and patronage in peace and war, meaning that military and political success were inextricably linked. During the first two centuries of its existence, the Roman Republic extended through a combination of conquest and alliance from central Italy to the entire Italian peninsula. By the following century, it included North Africa, the Iberian Peninsula, Greece, what is now in southern France. Two centuries after that, towards the end of the first century BC, it included the rest of modern France and much of the East. By, by the by this time, despite the Republic's traditional and lawful constraints against uh, any individual's acquisition of permanent political powers, Roman politics was dominated by a small number of Roman leaders. Their uneasy alliances punctuated by a series of civil wars. The final victor of these civil wars, Octavian, later Augustus, reformed the Republic as a principate, with himself as Rome's first uh, citizen, princeps. The Senate continued to sit in debate. Annual magistrates were elected as before, but final decisions on matters of policy, warfare, diplomacy, and appointments were privileged to the pr princeps as first among equals, or imperator due to the holding of imperium from which the term emperor is derived. His powers were monarchic in all but name, and he held them for his lifetime on behalf of the Senate and the people of Rome. The Roman Republic was never restored, but neither was it abolished, so that the event that signaled its transition to the Roman Empire is a matter of interpretation. Historians have variously proposed the appointment of Julius Caesar as perpetual dictator in 44 BC, the defeat of Mark Antony at the Battle of Actium in 31 BC, and the Roman set his citizens' grant of extraordinary powers to Octavian, which is Augustus, on the first settlement in 27 BC as candidates for the defining pivotal event ending the Republic. Many of Rome's legal and legislative structures can still be observed throughout Europe and the rest of the world by modern nation-state and internal organizations. The Rome's Latin language has influenced grammar and vocabulary across parts of Europe and the world. To get to look at coins of the Roman Republic, just search my store for the keyword Roman Republic through my website, trustedcoins.com. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.